There we go. Hello, everybody. It's Az with Lucky Duck Games. Hello, very, very welcome this evening or whatever time of the day it is where you are. In fact, let me know if you're in the chat. Send us a message whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. And there's a question for you. Where in the world are you? One of the things we notice actually on the Game Front campaign is we miss that community tab that we've been used to. We love to see where backers are coming from. Um, so if you're in the chat right now, I've got the chat here, so you might see me looking over here this evening. Uh, hello, Toby. Hi, Andy. Uh, Og, I saw your question. I will come back to it momentarily. Hello, Dragon Pro. I recognize that logo. Super active in the comments on the, the campaign. Thank you so much for all the effort there. Uh, YouTube and Yorkshire. Yeah, let me know in the comments where you're all from. I'm, I'm assuming you can all hear me uh, loud and clear, which is great. Hello, Ben, north of me. You're not that far north of me anymore, sir. <laughs> I don't know for how much longer, but we'll see. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tommy. You ducks are the best. Oh, Tommy, thank you. That is a lovely way to start the stream. I'm gonna say, uh, let me know where you're from and I'm gonna start the stream with a thing I, I've been doing recently, which is just, just smile. Just smile, feel good, how good this campaign's been. It's been an absolute blast. I've had so much fun. GameFound and the team there have been really supportive. It's been fun. And just smiling is the best. From Italy, man, we have so many fans in Italy. And so I did such a wonderful live stream uh, as part of Essence Spiel with the Italian team over there. It was wonderful. From Mexico, hello, Ernesto. That's epic. I love that. Loved your last live video, guys. Immediately went and ordered the deluxe edition. Excited, Chris. Thank you. That's that is absolutely epic. How nice of you to say. Uh, near Houston and Texas. Hey, I hope everything is good in Texas right now. I know it's been a really um, crazy few weeks there, so I hope you're safe and well. I have some family uh, near Houston from the UK. Says Dragon UK and YouTube here. Mars says Toby. You have been backing the Ares expedition. Mars uh, terraforming Mars Kickstarter, haven't you, sir? Mars on the brain, I love it. Uh, Las Vegas, still morning here. Hello, Brie, lovely to see you. Uh, and I'm gonna say Gwen Jones. Not sure if we're gonna get that right. Anyway, so the plan for this evening is to answer a few of your questions. I'll take a few questions initially at the start. I saw one that I'll scroll back to. So if you have any, I'll try and answer some now for you. Then we're gonna play, uh, here if this works, look at by the wonders of technology. Oh, we've got the first scenario, prototype of course, but the first scenario from Elemental Uprising that we're going to play through uh, together. And I have a little camera here so you guys can see and help potentially help make some decisions with me, which would be great. And then we'll do some questions at the end as well. Um, so that's, that is the plan. I think this button, there we go, that's the button I want. So let me scroll back up and grab one of the questions that I saw earlier on from Og, because Og was asking, uh, it wasn't told anywhere, but as more than uh, the More Than Shadows expansion comes with iron challenges for the scenarios, will the uh, $20 or $19 expansions contain them as well? So that's the two expansions, uh, Dark Elf, I always want to say Dark Elf Rising. Who's Star Wars fans out there? Can't help myself, but Dark Elf Slayer with Regzun uh, in there, and also the Gnomish Nonsense expansion. Those two expansions, they will, come with iron challenge options for their four scenarios. So you'll have four scenarios in them. They'll come with iron challenges and they'll come with the usual star difficulty, of course, one, two or three star and the heroic option as well. So you will have that, absolutely. So hopefully that answers your question. Let me scroll down here. You're very far away, but I'm, I'm gonna use my eyes. Honestly, great videos and your enthusiasm is infectious. It's happy supporter here in the UK. Oh, Chris, not that. Just uh, Vince, who's the CEO of Lucky Duck Games, has the best thing in the world. And he says it verbally and he also does it physically. And it makes me so incredibly happy. He says, heart with fingers, heart, heart with fingers. And it's <laughs> it's become one of my favorite things in the world. It, it's, it's you know, feedback is the breakfast of champions that can make your day and it can help you get better, whether it's critical or negative or positive. And heart with fingers is like top tier, right? Top tier. I'm gonna be doing a lot of this. There's gonna be a lot of this this evening because lockdown hair is a thing. <laughs> We're recovering back to more normal temps. Ah, this is this is regards to Texas, Houston. Still lots of busted pipes around the city, but working on fixing. Well, I'm very excited that things are getting back to normal. I, I, my heart goes out to everybody there because it looked like it really was a, a very, very tough time. Um, hello, Halana. So Halana Hope, one of the three designers of Kingdom Rush Rift in Time and also Elemental Uprising is in the chat. Hello, Halana. You can keep me right when I get all the rules wrong. Um, so without much further ado, I think... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I am worth this. I could. I would. I'll definitely put a stretch goal in for a haircut as soon as the as soon as the hairdresser is open. Woohoo! As is live. Good to see you. But hi, Christian. Lovely to see you, sir. It's awesome to have you here. Um. So yeah. Without much further ado, let's let's get into the first scenario. So if I ah, there we go. Marvelous. So 
A few things I want to point out first of all. This is very much a prototype, and also we have the 3D tires um, as a, an add-on essentially, which, so it's not coming with the base game. These are um, an extra add-on that you'll see that work with Rift in Time or with Elemental Uprising. So just to make sure you're aware with what you're seeing, I have the old Rift in Time tray. This was the original one from the King upgrade. That is getting replaced with the recrafted deluxe upgrade now. And also, if you're backing Elemental Uprising and you're not backing Rift in Time, the Deluxe Upgrade will come with an improved version of this tray where the tires and the damage tiles will be separated, so you don't need to have a little bit of extra uh, space over here like I do. That'll all be contained. So just before you're like, ah, why is it all messy-ish, uh, these will be improved for the final version, so keep that in mind. The scenario I'm going to play may well be close to final, but I can say for sure that there'll be some tweaks with the heroes and tweaks with the hordes and stuff to come. So just keep please in mind that it's still a, a, a prototype and work in progress. Also, some of you may be thinking, this little satchel, this little guy who I love, and if you're a fan of Kingdom Rush, I wonder, did any of you recognize this? Because I just recently I played through all of Frontiers. And I don't tend to go into the shop much and buy like the freezing wand and the dynamite and the gold and all that stuff. But that's the satchel directly from there. And it's fair to say that with all of the stretch goals we've unlocked, all of the extra tower mods we're going to have, that this is not going to be big enough anymore. So I can confirm, we did it in the comments, but just so you know, we are going to be making this bigger. We are going to be, we're literally waiting for some factories to come back to us because they've just reopened from Chinese New Year. And we're going to be looking at getting bigger versions of these. We haven't decided just yet if it's going to be one massive stick of container uh, for just the base game. Then you can put all the expansions in there as well. Or if we'll have individual ones for each box. And um, we're kind of, kind of thrashing it out a little bit at the moment. Um, <laughs> if you think that's messy, you should see my prototype. Halana sent me a, a wonderful wonderful photo of some play testing going on of the Leviathan. Um, but unfortunately, she doesn't have a Leviathan Mini and she used, uh, let's say, copyright infringing Star Wars mech. Uh, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to share that photo with you all. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked great, and I love seeing the board game uh, prototyping and playtesting happening because uh, doing it on your kitchens is kitchen tables is kind of like where this community gets its growth, its seed from, right? Uh, Dragon says, when I watched the trailer for this game, it looked so amazing and made me realize uh, that there was a previous game. It looked so much fun. I want to buy Rift in Time. Hey, well, I mean, Rift in Time is on our website right now, and the base game is in retail stores. If you don't want to wait, or if you order it through the campaign, of course, you can get it either in July or next year, whenever we deliver Elemental Uprising, whatever you choose, split shipping or single wave shipping wise. Um, T-shirt is from Mr. Meeple. Was somebody, was somebody asking that? What's the T-shirt? Lucky Duck merch? I wish. Yeah, this is... I mean, hold on a second. Well, is this the one I want? Yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't. There we go. We'll give it a little bit. I love this. There's a screenshot that none of you knew you wanted. Yeah. Love the Meeple Gamer uh, t shirts. They're, they're a blast. I've backed both their Kickstarters, actually. And I think most of my wardrobe is board game tangential these days. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love it. Who doesn't? So I, I have to, I'm sure I'll have to grow up at some point, but not anytime soon. Anyway, let's get in and start the first scenario. Now, I'm going to just play. So I'm not going to teach you the game. I'm not going to go through how to play. We have tons of videos, of course, on the channel. You've learned to play games on there. You have the Quackle Up guys. You have Tantrum House. You have loads of videos on there that will teach you the, the, the ins and outs of the game. I'm just going to play. But if you have questions... Or if you want to come up with suggestions for potential moves, I'm going to put some towers down at points. I'm going to have one of the characters kind of visible for you. Just throw out suggestions. Um, Edward says, how many funding quests will there be? And so how many funding quests will there be? Uh, we're getting close to the end. I can say that right now. We're really like, we're, we're, we're on the precipice. Um, our hope, like the campaign has exceeded our expectations. Um, like we are so, 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 so stoked with how it's gone. Um, so with the amount of support, the amount of backers, the amount of funding, we are definitely going to get to put everything in that we wanted, which is really the goal when it comes to crowdfunding, right? You want to have enough support that you can take it from kind of your minimum to what you hope will be the, the complete product. And that's definitely going to happen. I think really within the next couple of days, we're going to kind of finish everything. And then we'll have a couple of days left for the campaign finishes on Thursday, March 4th. So yeah, uh, can't tell you exact number off the top of my head, but it, we're really close. And for the Kingdom Pledge, is the price, let me bring this question up here. I don't worry. Uh, is the price the same because the Rift in Time content is going to be shipped and delivered? Um, 
hold on, let me start. And for the Kingdom Pledge, is the price the same because the Rift in Time content is going to be shipped and delivered in July and the rest in March? Uh, do you mean the price of the shipping? This is what I think you might mean. Because the price for a single way of shipping and split way of shipping for the Kingdom Pledge doesn't have an impact. And the reason for that is that the Kingdom Pledge will be stored in its own box. So if you imagine we're going to ship something to you, it's done by number of boxes or number of cartons, you know, if you want to get technical. Um, so Rift in Time, for example, might fit in one, but the Kingdom Pledge will fit in its own box, essentially. Um, you meant, no, no, it's fine. Yeah, I assume that's what you meant. <laughs> so yes, shipping price. So what will happen is, and to get this right, the Kingdom Pledge is made up of both games, so Elemental Uprising and also Rift in Time. So the Elemental Uprising, if you take the Kingdom Pledge, comes in the Ella Menace chest as its own individual box that will be packed and shipped as its own thing, no matter what else you get with it. So it doesn't matter if you get Rift in Time as part of that pledge as well and get it early. There won't be a change in the cost between the two because the LMNS uh, chest, the LMNS hoard essentially, will always ship as its own individual box. Seems a little bit silly, but it, it's, it's, it's just the nature of the logistics, unfortunately. Well, let's do a couple more questions before we start then, because they're coming in thick and fast now. Hello, Jacob. Will the expansions for Element Uprising have the Shadow Challenge mode from the stretch goals? I, Halana's in the chat, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that last time we live streamed, the guys called me out because I said, we want it, it has to be there, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that yes, it will indeed be there. I don't know why I have a niggle in my head, but I want to say yes, 100%. So the idea is that you can play on star difficulty, you can play on the heroic difficulty, you can play on iron challenge, special custom, each scenario has its own kind of extra thing you have to do. And then as well as that, you'll have the shadow challenge because every single backer will get the more than shadows expansion. So you'll have that automatically. If you wait until retail, more than shadows would be something that's lucky duck exclusive. So it won't be going to stores. So that wouldn't be a given, but it is if you're a backer. Uh, Anthony says, oh, it's a big message. I'm happy to back this game and get all the stuff for it. Was there some noticeable additional engagement and funding when you announced so many things piece by piece? I honestly didn't like having to keep going back and changing my pledge when new stuff kept getting added. So, I mean, that's a great question. And it's really like a marketing question, which I'm super, super happy to answer. And really, there's no perfect method to do it, whether it's daily unlocks, whether it's grouping stuff together, whether it's putting everything on there for, for everything in one go, day one, so you can just see immediately um, you know what's there and our goal is really to hopefully a couple of days before the end of the campaign have it all finalized and wrapped so you can very easily come along and say okay that's the final kind of thing do i think it's worth it and engaging enough for me um, and yeah i think a lot of people get on board with it a lot of people enjoy it and for us it gives us a way to kind of introduce little bits and pieces and get feedback and thoughts and processes as we go which is actually a little bit awesome <laughs> because if you think about it, if we threw everything up immediately and there's a couple of different things that people didn't like all at once, it can, can be hard to kind of combat that or people can back it and then just forget about it, you know, for three weeks until it's then the, the money comes off the card and it's done. And I think that's not what crowdfunding is about. And the stretch goals, they are legitimately, obviously the numbers change, but they're legitimately something that if we don't make the funding, if we don't get to where kind of our, our target goal is, we're not able to add all the content we want to. So that's what I'm saying. We've hit a goal, we've hit a number of backers and, and amount of funding that we needed to, it's legitimate. And it comes down to silly things like number of production costs, minimum order quantities, how many expansions we've sold, that kind of thing. And as those things happen, it enables us to put more in. So um, it's a little bit of everything and it's not for everyone. And unfortunately, I think the honest answer, my personal answer is no matter what we did, someone would not like one that method. <laughs> so the, the, the reason is engagement and a lot of people like it, but if it's not for you, apologies always kind of come back the last two days, really. And you should sort of see everything getting to the, the point that you'll know exactly what's there. Uh, Long-winded answer, but hopefully it answers uh, for you. Um, oh, Solomon has a question. Can the bosses from the original game be used in the new game? No, they can't. Wait, Halana says yes. But what, Halana? <laughs> or maybe, maybe, oh, there's a delay. There's a delay. Okay, my chat, my chat is, oh, no. Only the heroes will be cross compatible between the two games. So you can take Rift in Time heroes into Elemental Uprising and Elemental Uprising heroes across to Rift in Time. You can mix and match them even as well, potentially. Um, but no, you'll will not be looking to bring bosses in. I'm pretty sure with some very light home ruling, you could do it, but I'm not going to encourage that. Not now I see Jesse, other designers in the chat now. <laughs> Uh, Edwarder says, uh, oh, that's a, a shipping question again. Sorry, let's scroll down, scroll down. 
Uh, element is, oh, no, it's a new question. So, all right, so with the Kingdom Pledge, I will get the Riffin Time content in July if I choose the split way of shipping and the Elemental content later in March. The Kingdom Base is essentially the Emperor plus the Empress. You, you, you nailed it. You, that is it. So the Kingdom Pledge is basically like all the gameplay from both games. And because Rift in Time is ready, and what we're really just doing is getting those new game trays, trays. We're getting those errated cards fixed as well, so they can be included in that. And then we'll be shipping that all together as soon as we possibly can, really, which we've kind of estimated for July all being well. So Kingdom Rush and Rift in Time comes then. And we've got a lot of development still to do, Halana, Sen, and Jesse, and then our team as well have a lot to do in preparing all of the new scenarios that have been unlocked uh, for Elemental Uprising, and then that's estimated for March next year. So yes, you got it exactly right. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm scrolling. My I realize my chat is now a little bit farther back, and I see some cap letters. No, from Halana. Uh, thank you for the honest answer. It helped with the engagement. Glad you met all your goals. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and and thank you for being here, and thank you for putting up with it and and engaging on the stream. That's that's awesome. Uh, will there be more bosses? And um, so at the moment, Gultak, the community voted boss, uh, has just been revealed, I think, late yesterday evening as the next stretch goal as a miniature. Um, it's very likely that that's going to be the last boss that makes it into Elemental Uprising. But we're always, always listening uh, for more. Uh, I think, cool, cool, thank you, awesome. Uh, for France, could it be possible to do split shipping in shops? Guillaume, I actually do not know, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not 100% how the shop process is being handled because our wonderful uh, Lucky Duck French uh, team with Vincent and, and also Guillaume um, and Davy are handling that. Um, please do me a favor and pop a question on the comments on the actual campaign page and hopefully it'll get picked up unless Vince happens to be in the chat, unless he's stealthily watching me and making sure I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, my gut feeling says that we will send that to stores, um, but I'm not sure. So please pop a message uh, on the comments on the campaign. Oh, it says, for Element Rising, are we getting all the base game and expansion boxes, then the big chest as well, or will it be packed together in the big box and that's all we get? I don't have an issue either way. I was just wondering. So it's really up to you. So if you take the Elementus horde pledge or you take the kingdom pledge which are the big bundles you will have all of elemental uprisings expansions including more than shadows as well the stretch goal expansion all stored in one box you will not get all the extra boxes it'll be one elemental chest with everything inside it essentially for, for the base game more than shadows no mish nonsense and also dark elf slayer all in that one box you'll not have the extra ones if you want the extra boxes you'll have to pick them up individually on the campaign. Now, we've had a lot of requests for people wanting to say, hey, can I can I buy a big box on its own because I want all the individual boxes and the big box as well. I'm not quite sure of why that is myself. I can't I don't know <laughs> quite why that is. So we're we're looking into the potential for that, but it's not something that we're definitely gonna it was definitely not something we're gonna have for the campaign and it's something we're kind of not sure even if we'll make it for the pledge manager. And the reason simply is that what we're doing with that chest, the elements hoard, is packing it in the factory so it leaves as a single box to you with literally the game and the three expansions um, all inside immediately. Um, but you could buy them individually if you wanted, that will be an option, but you pick up them one at a time. Uh, hello, sir. Oh, Evangelist, it's lovely to see you. Oh, I so love it when you stop by. Uh, Kingdom Rush Rocks, I love the new changes in Element Uprising. A great system just became even better. Heart with fingers, stealing that from Vince and making that my thing. Thank you so much. I can take literally zero credit. I just get to be the lucky person who gets to talk about it and share it with you all while the wonderful designers and developers have to slave away in the dungeons, you know? So they've done an amazing job and I'm with you 100%. I adore the tower mods, I adore the new tires and we're gonna play and we're gonna talk about that. Um, Ban says, will I be able to buy the Kingdom Pledge in March 22 straight all in? So what'll happen very, very likely um, is, if I get this right, We'll have the, the campaign will end and a couple of weeks after the campaign ends, we will open the pledge manager. This is when you'll put in all your shipping details. This is when you'll pay your shipping, you'll finalize your pledge and you'll set up. If you choose split wave shipping, everything that can be sent as a split wave, we estimate will go then in July and everything else then will go later in March in next year, 2022. It's worth saying here, because essentially what I think your question is, at some point 
we have to close the pledge manager to lock down all the shipping addresses. So I can't say exactly when that would be, but what we'll probably do is, is lock the pledge manager and all the shipping for the Wave 1 items sometime before July, a month or two at least before July. And then once we get towards the end of the year, we would lock it again to prepare for the shipping then for the Element Uprising. So will you be able to buy the entire Kingdom Pledge in March 2022? Probably not exactly like this but we will have the components available either in stores or if they're exclusive on our website. So it's, it's definitely easiest to buy it now or during the pledge manager and we'll communicate that as clearly as we can. Um, oh, okay. So Guillaume said, okay, so you actually did ask in the comments already, but I was I was told it would be a single wave. Okay, and, and to be honest, uh, whoever has responded there from our customer support team on the comments, very, very uh, much believe that they know what they're talking about. And if they say single wave, then that's what's happening. Because <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, okay, scroll. Thanks for the answer on my questions. Hey, you're very welcome. Uh, lots of lovely messages. Uh, replacement components. That Yes, this is a great question, Kickstart Gaming. Lovely to have you here, actually. Just realized, I just, just clicked in my brain. Uh, the replacement components, they're selectable in the Pledge Manager after the campaign. That's exactly correct. So if you're coming as a returning backer and you're after the hearts, um, or the errata cards, the, the little extra things we're putting in, you will be able to get that in the pledge manager, they'll be selectable. We really wanted them to be on the campaign, but unfortunately there were some technical restrictions with GameFound that meant we couldn't put them on the campaign for free, because essentially that's what we wanted to do is put them on there so they could just click and, and check out. It wasn't allowing us to do that. So yes, pledge manager for those replacement ones for previous backers. Uh, okay, there's, um, I see that. Uh, uh, Og, did you hear my question? Just to quickly say, for your question, I did answer it in full detail, but yes is the answer. So uh, more than Shadows expansion contains iron challenges. Will the smaller expansions? Yes, yes, they will. That's the short answer. There was a five-minute ramble version further back. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, right. Going to stop the questions. And then I'm going to come back at the end, of the end of the stream, and we'll have another round of questions again. Oh. Oh, okay, hold on, Anthony. What's he saying? Let's let's pick up the last one. Last one. Okay. What are the uh, so what are the replacement components? Uh, yes. So essentially, oh, I'm going to get this right. It was five misprinted cards that need to have literally like a number changed, or I, I believe it is essentially just a damage type icon or a number icon uh, on a couple of cards that we're going to essentially send for free. And then we've got the red hearts. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think that might be it. I think that's it. Um. There might be something else I am forgetting, but essentially it was those two things. Um, and yes, we have very much taken on board all the feedback and we're super aware of, of, of everything that people said. So with Elementor Uprising, we're trying to both um, offer fixes and support for the first backers of the first Rift in time and also you know make things really, really interesting and good. Um, and yeah, Og, Og444 is a great question. I'm going to actually just pitch that to Halana and or Jesse who are in the chat. Will healing mechanic work the same way like in Rift in Time? Uh, I believe it's changing. I believe the Horde's monster healing is now going to be AoE, potentially an entire board healing, if I remember right, which means that you've got to focus on those healing. Um, yeah, and yeah, you're going. To, you're definitely. You've got it. Fans of uh, Kingdom Rush, the mobile games, are super familiar that there are some bosses, and and especially the likes of Gulfak, who have healing that's going to be impactful on the tabletop whenever you play Element Uprising. Yeah, you got it. It yeah, it's more evil. Okay, well, I gotta let Halana have that discussion because healing is indeed more evil, and I want nothing to do with it because the designers, as lovely as they are, love the pain of players. It's it's so so true. Okay. I'm gonna get into this. So this is scenario one. As a quick reminder, it's super, super prototype. So nothing here is final, but it's gonna give you a really good feeling for the gameplay. I'm playing as Bruxa and Ulrich. I'm gonna be dual handing it, but the game will come with a custom solo mode. So if you want to play as a single hero, there will be rules for you to do that and have solo play just custom for you and one hero. Or you can, of course, play dual handed. I don't know what most solo players like. I think there's a big split in that community, but we're gonna have custom solo mode rules anyway, so you can have both as an option. So the goal here, for scenario one is the round in which the last horde is spawned is the final round. So I've got my two horde spawn stacks here, pre-made. Uh, although I did shuffle them and I, I don't know exactly what's gonna be on the other side because as ever, there are multiple versions of each strength of card. So I don't know exactly what I'm facing, but I have a rough idea. I know greens are gonna be easier to fight than reds, essentially. 
At the end of the final round, all hordes left in play advance until they reach the kingdom. If the kingdom survives, you win. So I need to attack the hordes as much as possible. Once I'm out of horde cards, that's going to be the last round. I need to take as many out as I possibly can. And any I don't, whether there's a hero or a soldier on them, it doesn't matter. They're going to charge to the end of the kingdom and deal damage. And I have five hearts to survive. Now, one thing I'll say is that if you played Rift in Time, we had a, the same different levels, like one, two, three star. And what that did is it tweaked your amount of health which was a great way of, of doing the difficulty, but we've actually changed it a little bit to make it a little bit more um, kind of uh, player in, in, intuitive, a little bit more controlling for the players. And what I mean by that is the health is set. So I have a set of five. I'm going to play on two stars, which is basically now our normal difficulty. And then you can go to hard or you can go to easy. And that what that's going to do, essentially one star being easier, is going to give you more resources and allow you to upgrade some of your towers. And hard is going to take away some of your starting resources, so you're going to have a harder time. I just realized I haven't set up my starting resources. Give me a second. I think it's four, yeah, four diamonds, uh, four crystals, sorry, and two gold is my starting resources. So if I was to play, I'm on essentially normal, two stars. If I was to go to hard, I'd have slightly less resources. If I was to go to easy, I'd have slightly more resources and or potentially some tires leveled up a little bit. So you've got a little bit more control over exactly what you're going to do um, with the difficulty curve, which is great. So you can really find the one that, that suits you. I'm going to grab my starting tires, which I, my hero board will tell me. So Bruxa has a stone circle, a mystic dais, and a defender barracks. Now, I, I better mention at this point, really important to note that the artwork on these are from an older version. So these are not the same as you'll see on the campaign page because we have actually changed them. However, if you look mechanically, they are the same. So the artwork is indeed going to uh, match what is on the campaign, not what you're seeing directly in front of you here. Um, so actually, let me just put, the, I'll leave these here and you can have a little look. That camera is a little bit more slanted than I hoped, but hopefully you can, yeah, hopefully you can make those out. All Rick's starting tires then. He needs a Hunter Arbor, a Defender Barracks, and also a Stone Circle. Awesome. I'm not playing, as it's the first scenario, I'm not playing with any special abilities, but of course we do have hero special abilities in the game. Each one comes with four. So I've got a couple for each of them here, and you will have to choose two of them each time you play, and you'll basically kind of unlock the ability to use higher level um, abilities as you are going through the campaign and then unlocking more stuff. So just to give you an idea, so I'm not going to be using these now, and I'm also only going to be using the first three levels of towers, one, two, and three. If you really enjoy this tonight, if we have a good blast and we, we do well and you want me to do another stream before the campaign ends, we could potentially do another scenario where we've got the tier four towers and some abilities as well. But for now, I'm going to stick to the first scenario. I'm just checking. Um, okay, awesome. I'm just making sure everyone's, everyone seems happy in the comments. Okay, good. So... I've got my starting tires. I definitely need to remove those skulls. I shouldn't be starting with any skulls on Broxa. And we need to reveal our hordes. Okay, that is a really big horde. That is that's that's a very non-scary horde because it's got lots of monsters that don't have any abilities, but they're really awkward shapes, and there's a lot of them. So just I'll mention this quickly. This, if you haven't played before, we're looking to cover up with polyominoes. We cover it with polyominoes, we destroy it. Very simple, cover all the monsters, we're good. We do have a big or large monster here. If it makes it to the end and any part of it is revealed, uh, revealed, revealed, still uncovered, and it makes it to the kingdom, I will take four hearts worth of damage, to, even if only one square is covered. So I have to cover all of that to make sure it's not impactful. And these guys are fast. And they got speed essentially. So if any of these guys are visible whenever the horde starts its activation, it will attempt to move twice along the path, not just once. Okay. Uh, I need to put my sand warriors out. So Arik has two sand warriors who are epic. You're going to get to see them in action. I'm currently just using little prototype meeples. If you've got the deluxe version, of course, you're going to have those miniature sand warriors, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm just using these little prototype ones. And I think we're good to go. I've got my crystals. I've got my gold. I'm declaring, essentially, that Brux is going to use uh, the purple building sites and Alaric's going to use the green. It could be the other way around, and it would have an impact on the game. I'm doing it for ease of play for myself because Brux is purple and I can remember it, but any character and any hero can play on any player color sites, and that changes the scenarios a lot, which is really interesting. I think I'm good to go. Now, in the first round, we don't do the first phase, which is spawn new hordes, because through the setup, we already have our hordes on the table. 
we're going to go straight to play tire and hero cards. So I'm going to put Bruxa's here. So don't forget, Bruxa, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, Bruxa is in control of the purple building sites. So I'm going to leave you guys to look at that and think it over. If you have any thoughts and suggestions what I might do, please feel free to chuck them in. If you put something like, I don't know, hashtag suggestion or something in the chat, then I'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly as I'm watching the chat fly by. So what are my objectives here? First of all, the first thing I always like to do is say, are any of the hordes threatening the kingdom at the moment? So this horde would move one, so it's not threatening the kingdom yet. This one would move two, which is one, but then it would be blocked for the second movement, so it would hop in. So these two combined do make a kingdom threat, and this one is not threatening the kingdom at all. Like This has really got a long way to go. I've got two spawn points here, which are going to spawn two horde cards uh, in phase one of the start of next round. So I'm basically thinking that I know these two spots here are going to be filled at the start of next round. So I'm basically just trying to think, okay, I want to probably deal as much as possible with the speed threat and probably would like to take care of this completely. Um, but what I might do is spend some time upgrading tires or modifying tires here. I don't think I need to go super aggressive, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play with Ulrich, and when you're playing, if you're solo or if you're uh, playing with multiple people, you can freely take your actions. So you can you can activate each player and take actions as you go. However, you must complete a full action when you do it. So you can't move your hero and then have someone else play a tire and then attack with your hero and back and forth like that. So you must complete an action, but you can essentially mix and match and change the order because it's simultaneous play, essentially. So... I think what I'm going to do is I am going to focus relatively hard on taking out this horde because it really is the one that I think is the most threatening. So to do that in a really nice way, I'm going to use Brooks's purple defender barracks. I'm going to have it place a soldier just there. And I'm going to have it use its dagger, its throwing dagger, to throw a dagger onto an adjacent horde, which would be any of the spaces around it. And I'm going to throw it onto this one. I'm going to start softening that up a little bit. It's very likely that I think I'm going to send Ulrich here. And I'm just basically trying to think, okay, if I send Ulrich here, how much extra damage do I need to put on that alongside Ulrich? So I think what I'll do is actually I will activate Ulrich right now, and I'm going to send him in. Yeah, I think I will indeed. So I'm going to have him move. He's got a movement of three. So off the exit tile, he'll go one and then two simply to here. I'm then going to move his sand warriors. Now, sand warriors are like normal soldiers. They can cover a monster, but they also give protection to the hero that they're uh, in this sharing a space with. So I'm going to send one with him. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. And the other one, I'm going to basically keep kind of like in reserve. So it's got two movements. I'm going to send it to here. Because I don't want it to fight right now. I don't actually want it to die. I'd rather kind of space it out, if that makes sense. And yeah, I think I'm pretty comfortable with that. What I'm then going to do is have Auric do his basic attack. So once you, you can do it before or after you move, but you've got an action with your hero as well. Now that could be a basic attack. It could be one of your special abilities, or you could actually recover, which would bring your health back to full. And if you've exhausted any of your special abilities, it would refresh them too. And specifically for Ulrich, when he rests, he gets his sand warriors back in his place too. So it's move and before or after you move, perform an action. So I'm going to have him do a basic attack, which for him is a melee attack on the engaged horde. I'm going to put one and one. That seems pretty good. Pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm thinking, I initially I thought I might let this one survive, but I'm now thinking, actually, I think I really should take it out. Yeah. Do you know what? I think we will. We will attempt to take this out. I'm a little, I'm a little unsure of myself but I think I'm going to try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Auric's Tars aside for a second. No, actually, let's do it with Auric's Tars. I'm going to play Auric's Stone Circle to here. So Stone Circles are really interesting. I've got one here so you can see up close. Normally, when you play a tire, you choose one of the directions, one of the potential attacks. So if it's forward, diagonal, diagonal, you pick one, and that's the way you attack. Stone Circles have the blast uh, little symbol you'll see here, which means they do their damage in all in all directions. So I'm going to get to put two singles, uh, if I can find, they always find their way to the bottom of my tray. Come on, singles. And we're going to put one in front. We're going to focus. You'll see that I'm doing little things because I've played the game a few times, obviously. 
I'm doing little things that might not be directly intuitive, but here what I'm doing is trying very hard to cover the monsters that are going to be more problematic to cover later by picking the ones that are kind of in an odd shape or in an awkward corner. It really helps later on as you're kind of playing more of the game. So it's got nine more spaces to cover. I could bring Bruxa in. She herself could cover four, which would leave me with five, or she could simply use her attack which would cover two. I very much want to get Bruxa into the fray because she actually soaks up power from the, the hordes that die. And that power then can be used actually to attack. So I'm thinking I might send her right in immediately and be a little bit bold with her. And if I do that, I'm just seeing, do I have enough damage? Yeah, I, I do. I can do this. Although what I would really love to do is play this Mystic Dias onto here but it only attacks directly forward. And I don't have a site that allows me to do that. That's really a pain, actually. I'm a little bit sad. I should have done that slightly differently. I should have made for Ulrich here, but you know what? We're just going to live with it. And we're just going to continue on. And I think, I think we can still do this. Although I'm not super sure. This might be really inefficient now. So let's put Ulrich's Hunter Arbor down. And let's put it just here, like so. So I now have seven to cover. Yeah, unfortunate here that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get that in one go. Which, I'm. it's not the end of the world. So actually, it's, it's okay that I don't get it in one go. I just would like Bruxa to get charged up, you know? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Bruxa. I'm going to have her move one two to here and very important that when you move your hero facing facing is important so i'm going to face bruxa towards this side of the board and i'm going to have her do her basic attack which is a little two by one and she can do it in one of the three spaces in front of her so i'm going to have her do it simply here like so that's fine by me and i'm already starting to think a little bit ahead about what i'm going to do to this horde next because i'm trying to think about how how i can really take it out super cleanly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass some tires. So Ulrich is going to pass his defender barracks to become a warden barracks, and that's going to go into the incoming tires for Bruxa. That's fine. I'm going to do the same, but the other direction now, for Ulrich. So I'm going to send the stone circle and also the mystic dais back to make a level 2 Arcanist, Arcanist dais and a level 2 boulder circle. Whoops. So you'll see now the Arcanist has an extra square, which is quite impactful, surprisingly. And the Boulder Circle now has a two by one to all three areas that can be rotated. So pretty good improvements. I'm going to pass them to Ulrich for next turn. So it feels like I didn't do that much here. I think I could have done a little bit better here if I'd thought about my play a bit more, but I think it's all right. So now we're going to destroy Horde Tray. So this one is fine. This one is going to get destroyed. So I take the Horde Tray away. Ulrich would normally take one damage at this point, but he had a Sand Warrior, so I'll simply just return the Sand Warrior to my hero board, and I get protection from the Sand Warrior, so I do not take any damage. So yeah, unfortunately, what I'm doing is I've gained myself a coin, which is awesome, but by only taking out a single horde, I've kind of limited the amount of resources I've gained, which is a little sad, but I do not think it's the end of the world. So we have destroyed Horde Trays, now we're going to advance Horde Trays. So this Horde closest to the exit will move first, and it will just move one space. There's no abilities to worry about. And then similar situation for this Horde, it's going to move one space, and it will bump Ulrich. And I have to move into a free space, so it could be here, 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 or here. Can't be where, um, or it could be, sorry, it could be where Brooks is, but it can't be where the tires are. But I'm simply going to move him to there. No big deal, he can reach everything he needs to without much issue. We're going to now pick up the Tyrant Hero card, so really important. Really important you pick up your hero card to make sure you remind yourself to play it. So I have a level two warden barracks now in Bruxa alongside the level two, two level two towers that I have with Ulrich. And then we pick everything up according to our color. So purples are going back to Bruxa, greens are going back to Ulrich. And now I've got four towers with Ulrich and two towers with Bruxa. So I think it's very likely that I'm going to buy at least one, if not two towers for Bruxa to kind of shift that back. Because right now, Bruxa's hand is this, which is really not cool. Ah, oh, Bree in the chat. Bree in the chat. Thank you. 
So the passive ability of Bruxa is uh, each time a horde that is in or adjacent to Bruxa Spia is destroyed, you put a skull on your board. And there was one here that was destroyed adjacent to her, and I get a skull. Heart with fingers. So I have one skull on Bruxa, and that's going to trigger at the start of her activation. You'll see that later. Really awesome. And I positioned her to do that even though I forgot the skull, which is great. Now we're going to spend crystals and gold. So I've got four crystals, first of all. Tier 1 tires cost two crystals. Tier 2 tires, level 2 tires, cost three crystals. I'm not under any real pressure at the moment. I'm happy passing tires between heroes. So I'm going to buy two level 1. And I think what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to buy a Mystic Dias for Bruxa. So this will go into her hand. Hopefully, yeah, you guys can see that well. And I'm also going to buy a Hunter Arbor for Bruxa. And the reason I'm doing that is because she's got two Soldier Towers right now, and Soldier Towers can be stacked. They can have another tower placed on top or beneath them, essentially, before or after they're placed. And that could be two Soldier Towers or different types of towers. Right now, Auric has four towers, and none of them are Soldiers, which means he needs to build, if he's going to, on four different building sites. And right now, uh, I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to really do. So I would like to get some soldier tires, some militias um, on Auric quickly. But I also needed to reinforce the damage on Bruxa. Now, I'm going to spend two gold doing some, up, uh, some modifying. So I'm going to grab one of my tower mods. Now, you'll have seen in the campaign, we've unlocked a whole lot more tower mods. We've, Phoenix has brought tower mods. Umbra's brought tower mods. We've unlocked some advanced tower mods. The expansions come with tower mods. The Ash Bright. Oh my god, so cool. There's loads of tower mods that are going to be in the final game. I just got the initial kind of four. So I'm going to choose from these, of course, because that's all I do have available to me. But you'll have a much wider array of options um, when you're playing yourselves in the final game. So I can go for perfect range, which is basically it lets me attack anywhere uh, on the board. I can go for true damage which means it doesn't matter what I'm attacking, essentially tree damage will get through, and you'll see more of that later. I can add an additional attack of two by one that's freely rotated, or I can add an additional soldier. Now, again, I've played a little bit, and I have a fan favorite combo, and I must admit that it's something I've done. Sometimes it's worked really well, sometimes it hasn't. And it kind of depends on your own planning and also the hordes that you get. So I'm going to put um, perfect range, uh, actually should be here, on the Arcanus Dias. So instead of having to just shoot directly in front now, I have a two by two that I can freely place anywhere I want. And the other cool thing about the Mage Tower chain, so these guys here, is they have this little symbol here, the Satchel with the plus. And that's because they can have two tower mods on them. So that is something that, I think it's going to be really, really useful momentarily. Um, yes, I have I have a plan. I have a full-on real plan. Uh, one question, comment, request. <laughs> one question, comment, request. My goodness, I'm going to have to bring this up right now. Tree Board Game says, Hi there, I have one question, comment, request. It runs a, a second campaign on the game. Uh, where do we have King Dennis? Oh, please make expansion with him as an add-on. Really good question. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> that's one really. If Helena and Jesse are still here, that's like <sighs> there's so much lore still in Kingdom Hearts that we have not delved into, and the fact that they've let us introduce Elemenus and they let us introduce the Time Mages, Rift in Time, they've let us expand it. But there's so much we haven't delved into that it's very hard to choose everything. Um, and nothing is planned at the moment. Is all I can really say, to be honest with you. But we're super aware. I would love to see Vengeance looked at as a game, but it's so different to the way these games are because you're playing as the villains, essentially. So, like, yeah. For now, nothing. That's all I'll say. So, let's get into round two. I've spent my crystals. I've spent my gold. End of round one. Round two, spawn new hordes. So, I'm going to flip up spawn token one. This is my horde stack. I'll let you guys see this. Hopefully you can, yeah. Uh, satyrs emerge from the jungle. They're quick and able to dodge most tire attacks. Enemies that are vulnerable to soldiers must be covered by soldiers, heroes, or true damage tiles. So these guys can only be hit by those specific things. And it also comes with a spawn icon, which basically tells me I need to draw another card, which, no surprise, is going to contain some of those Evil, evil, evil satyrs. Um, 
you pause the game as do you keep the sticker uh you pause the game as but do you keep the sticker on the tower while upgrading great question og so um i have upgraded the Arca arcanist dais if i upgrade this to level two it goes back to the supply i take a level three and i pass it on and that is now in there modified in the general supply ready to be bought or upgraded to again and if you look very closely on the stretch goals we're unlocking at the moment oh there's some fun advanced tower mods that have extra um mechanics that tie into leveling up tires and and oh it's yeah it's fun so yes they stay with the tire is the answer uh, so we've got a new horde. We have to spawn one from here too. We have a horde with speed. I hate a horde with speed that is at the back because it can hop, 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 and that's always a pain. One thing I want to mention that I haven't talked about at all is in the very first scenario, we have just our introductory magic blossoms, the first ones we started with, but now there's going to be frost, stone, fire, and frost, stone, fire, frost, stone, fire. Frost and fire. What's the other one? Storm. <laughs> um, I think it's storm. Yeah, frost, stone, fire, storm. Poof. Um, there's going to be lots of different types of blossoms now in the game, thanks to everyone's support. These blossoms that I have in the three locations on the board. If I move a hero into their space, even for a moment, <laughs> heart. <laughs> if I move a bloss uh, a hero into a blossom for a moment, what I'll get to do is I get to place one damage on two different hordes, and it's counted as true damage. So those magic blossoms are actually going to give me a way, if I need to, to deal with these satyrs, because they can only be covered by soldiers, heroes, or true damage. So I've got four of them, and I need to keep that in mind for handling them. <laughs> okay, cool. You're very, very welcome. So... I've got a cool move that I'm going to do right off the bat because I want to, and I was thinking about it, and it's why I did this, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to play Aurix Arcanus Dias here with its perfect range to place a two by two directly here. Get it? I love it. That's happening. Then. Yeah, I think that's fine. I feel like that's fine. Yeah. Then I'm gonna grab Defender Barracks from Bruxa. I'm gonna place it down here. Place a single soldier to deal with that immediate threat. Boom. Because that is an immediate threat that's gonna throw a dagger to an adjacent horde. Ugh, the whole thing's just horrible. So let's just put it there. Big mess of goblin things. Right. That had to be dealt with. I'm happy dealing with it like that. I could have also potentially like put Bruxa on there or put Auric on there. Auric and his, do you know, Auric and his Sand Warrior would have been a perfectly legitimate way to deal with this. However, the reason I didn't want to do that is because these tires here aren't really useful for other stuff. I mean, I could have used this one here, but I've got, oh man, do you see, I'm, I'm second guessing myself now. I could have maybe used these two and that one for there. Ooh. Sorry, we're committing. We're committing. We're going for it. Next, Aurix up. Aurix going to activate. He's going gun ho in towards these guys. He's going to go one, two to here. He's going to bring his sand warrior, one, two as well. He's then going to go ahead and do his basic attack, which is a two by one, and the reason I love this game so much is that every single play you make has like an alternative or slightly better or slightly worse or just or the same but different kind of play. And that like really adds so much to the thinking, and the strategy behind it that I just I just adore. Now, this is really nicely finished off by the Mystic Dias of Bruxa. It's going to go here. We're going to play a little L shape that can be freely rotated. And I know that that is now dealt with. Awesome. So overall, super fine with everything that's happened thus far. The only thing I'm a little bit sad about is Bruxa. It's not going to be possible for her easily to be close to the two hordes that are going to get destroyed unless I actually go after this one as well, which, I mean, possibly. I mean, if I want to be really bold, do I want to be really bold? I might. I might want to be really bold. Okay, I'm going to do some quick math. Here we go. 
as commit. There are so many ways you can play. I know, I'm so bad. Okay, I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen different monsters there. Oh, that's a lot of monsters. I could get maybe three, four, five, six damage at a Bruxa, maybe. It's not bad. That's pretty it's pretty decent. I, I could definitely get that. I could get maybe seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I'm gonna struggle. I think I'm gonna struggle to take this out this turn. And if that's the case, then we're gonna just play it safe and we're gonna continue to whittle, whittle things down. So First things first, then I'm going to play Auric Boulder Circle here, which is going to let me now, because it's level two, put out two two by ones onto every horde that it's currently facing in front of it, all three. So I'll put a two by one here, a two by one here. I love this puzzle. It makes my brain hurt, but in a really good way. Um, and what I'm going to do, because I really, I said, shouldn't let me forget what I say, right? Oh, I still have the question on the screen. Sorry, thank you. Let me scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Boom. Thanks, Andy. Um, the cool thing about this is, oh, what was I saying? No, keep me honest, because I, what I tend to do, because the game's so fantastic, is I'll say something in between actions, and I'll go, I must do this. And then something very shiny and another great opportunity appears, and I forget completely about what I said. But what I said between rounds is I want to make sure that I get a soldier tower back to Ulrich. And I want to stay true to that because it will really help his flexibility. So I'm going to take the level two warden barracks, I'm going to upgrade it to a ranger barracks, and I'm going to pop that into Ulrich's incoming towers. Committing, committing to that. Okay. I'm then going to activate Bruxa. Bruxa, when she activates, at the start of her activation for each skull that she has on her board, she gets to place a single skull damage onto a target in one of the three spaces in front of her, which is why the facing was so important. So I'm going to put a single little skull just there. When she activates, I'm going to attack first. So I'm going to use a little two by one, which is her basic ranged attack. And then I'm going to move her. And I'm going to move her. I want to make sure that she stays close to at least one of the whores that's going to get eliminated, destroyed. So I'm going to have her simply move to here and face this way. Totally cool with that. Now, what have I got left? I've got a Hunter Arbor in Brox's hand. I've got another Hunter Arbor in Ulrich's hand and a Stone Circle in Ulrich's hand. I definitely could continue to put damage down or I can look at upgrading. I'm going to kill or destroy a, a green horde here and a green horde here. So that's going to give me two gold. So upgrading and maybe getting some more level two towers that could potentially have modifications put on them seems like a really good call. So I'm going to pass the Hunter Arbor to Ulrich. I'm going to pass the Hunter Arbor back to Bruxa. And I'm going to pass the Stone Circle across to Bruxa too. Now I have really, that's, that's four towers this turn that I have passed and upgraded. I need to be careful. I don't spend too much time upgrading and not enough time damaging. Wait, so you can attack, then move, move, then attack. Can you move one, then attack, then move? No. You can do the first one and the second one, but not the third one. So you can do an action and move or a move and action. And I say action because your action could be a basic attack, a special ability, or a recover. But you can't move one, action, move one. There you go. All right, so we're done. So we're going to go to three, which is destroy horde trace. So this one is out of there. Good work, little soldier. Good work, Brooks. Uh, look at this. This How cool is this, actually? This had a soldier. It had a dagger from a different militia. It had a Bruxa AoE. It had a mystic tower, a boulder tower, and an archer. It had a little bit of everything, and I love that so much. Yes. So I'm going to net myself a gold. And this one is going to get destroyed. And yet again, we'll lose the Sand Warrior back to Ulrich's board. However, he's not going to take a damage because we have protection from that Sand Warrior, which we love. Ulrich is like the supporter, kind of paladin-esque kind of character who like wants to send his Sand Warriors out to support the other allies, let them engage while giving them protection. Like The cool thing about this is if I wanted to double both Ulrich and Bruxa up on the same tray for eight squares of damage, I could put a Sand Warrior with them and both of them would basically take no damage because they've got protection. Super cool, right? Ulrich is kind of 
straightforward in principle, but you can do really neat things with them that are game changing, which to me is super cool. We destroyed a horde beside Bruxa. So we get a skull token. We're on two skull tokens. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. <laughs> okay, we're going to advance hordes. So this one's going to advance one. Now, Rux is going to get moved. And where she gets moved to is kind of important because I want her to be able to attack with her passive ability, which so I'm going to move her to here. This horde is then going to move one as well. That's fine. Heart with fingers. Skull, heart with fingers. We're then going to pick up Tyrant Hero cards. Okay, so let's pick everyone back up. Uh, we Yeah, we only played four tires on the board, and we passed four tires. So here's Brooks's current hand, folks. I'm about to sneeze. Ooh. Oh, it's gone. It's hiding on me. So... Two level twos, we now have the Watcher, which is a three by one freely rotate with a good versatility on its potential targets. And it comes with the ability for far shot, which means we can actually reduce the polyomino from three by one to two by one, and then attack anywhere on the board, which is really, really wicked. So having that flexibility for later is good. I definitely would love to see some true damage somewhere because... I've got these four satyrs to deal with that need soldiers, heroes, or true damage to deal with. So the potential options for true damage, uh, what, what I'm, I'm saying is I'm looking at what tires could be potential ones. Here is Ulrich's selection of tires. Now, unfortunately, you'll see that the soldiers, they can't actually have tire modifications put upon them. So they're not an option for changing their damage or changing their range. However, this is now a great tar in its own right. It can attack in any of eight directions, put out two soldiers, who then both throw a javelin each. Super wicked. Um, we obviously have our modified Arcanist Dias that we did last round, and we now have the Boulder uh, Circle and the Watch Arbor as well, both at level two. So, I mean, I'm hoping this strategy of uh, leveling up the tars is going to pay off. Okay, now we need to spend crystals and gold. Uh, I've only got two gold, so I'm going to get a modification, and I'm going to... I do... I definitely want some true damage to help me deal with these guys. I just don't know which tire really wants it the most. Um, the funny thing is, the Arcanist Dias would be an option. I could put a second mod to give me a 2x2, two two, true damage, perfect range, which would be quite nice here. I'd be losing a square, but it'd still be pretty nice. Um, I think that's what I might do. I think it feels pretty good. Or the other option would be like a stone circle, something with blast, something that's going to hit multiple targets at once. With true damage would be really cool as well. Something like the boulder circle. There's actually one there. If I put true damage on it, then I'm going to have true damage and true damage and two, maybe even three directions, right? Pretty good. Um, so that's, yeah, an option too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to Bruxa. I'm gonna spend two gold. I've already put the gold away actually, and give this boulder circle uh, true damage. I've done it. It's done. Committed. Committed. Okay, we're now at the end of round two, starting round three. So spawning new hordes. First of all, from here. Yep, more sat here is okay. It's kind of expected that. So. That's pretty good, actually, because two of those satyrs are, are together. Yes, that feels really good now. That's worked out pretty well. Um, we've, oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> okay, and we've got satyrs here as well. Um, Ulrich needs to get bumped, and I'll bump him just to here. Seems fine. Uh, all right, game. All right. I see what you're doing. This is horrible. This is, like, look at this. All speed, all satires, all the time. Hate it. Hate everything about it. I love it, and I hate it. Okay. Respond new hordes. Phase two. Play tower and hero cards. So, I feel like Ulrich is going in here, potentially. Um, 
yeah, check this out. I've got a plan. Here's my plan. So I'm going to have Ulrich activate. I'm going to have a move once to here. Designers, keep me right on this. I'm going to move once to here. Trigger this magic blossom by moving into the space, which will let me put out two single damage tiles. And these will come with tiles specifically for the blossoms in the game. These are true damage. So I'm going to put one here and I have to put the other one on a different horde. I'm going to put it on that guy. Then I'm going to continue Ulrich's movement because we moved one. I'm going to move two to here because he's a hero. He can cover the satyrs and that feels awesome. I'm then going to have him do a basic attack. I'm going to have him put just a little two there like that. Snazzy, snazzy. A little one just in there. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah, I'm super good with that, I think. Yeah, yeah, I am. So... I really partly wish I had the true damage two by two now, but we didn't go that route, so I'm just going to have to bear it. And what we'll do instead is we will grab the boulder circle and we'll place it here with its true damage. And we're going to put out two two by ones with true damage. One's going to shkum over here, get rid of both those satyrs, and one's going to shkum over here, deal that. Feels good, man. Okay, it feels good. Yeah, yeah, and I'm feeling I'm feeling good about that actually. So it's soldier time. I'm now gonna have Ulrich play his ranger barracks here. Now, these soldiers could go anywhere here now, but I'm gonna have both of them go onto this horde covering both the satyrs that are need horde uh, need soldiers heroes or true damage they're then going to throw some daggers to adjacent hordes so it could actually be any of the three hordes but it's going to be back here now you'll notice something i'm doing here and again it's something i come back to later uh, earlier on is that right now these are not immediate threats what i want to avoid happening is having this speed one coming through and jumping i want to be dealing as much as possible with the satyrs over the course of some rounds, so I don't let lots of them build up and then not be able to do enough damage to all the satyrs at once. So I'm kind of focusing on individual hordes, but focusing on the ones that are going to cause the issues. I do want more damage on this guy, because if he gets to there, I'm starting to limit the number of places I can attack it from. So I'd love to put a little bit more, just a little tinsy bit more onto that one. Maybe. 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 But maybe I won't. But maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Maybe I will. Defender Barracks. This is Brux's. I'm going to play it on top of the boulder circle that she's already placed. Can only attack straight forward. So it's going to take care of the last monster here and throw a dagger over to here. Like so. Whoops. Just wrecking the place. Is that a good place for it? Feels okay. Doesn't feel amazing, but feels okay. Oh, not 100% sure. Then, I've already played one tower here, right? Then we're going to play Ulrich's Ranger Barrack. Oh, sorry, Border Circle, sorry. You can see, apologies, I'm not reading chat right now because I've got totally in to the puzzle. I'm, I'm like, I'm in the zone, folks. I promise, I promise. At the end, I'm going to come back and, and answer questions. Have your questions ready for me. If if Halana and Jesse aren't being amazing and answering them already in the chat, I promise we'll have a proper question round before we're done. I'm, I'm just there, you know. I'm in here. We're doing it. Uh, right. What are we doing, actually? I say we're doing it, and I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going after this guy, right? Probably, definitely, maybe, very likely. Yeah. So, Bruxa, watch your arbor. Three in a row. Wabam! Get out of here. Whoosh. Is that what I want to do, though? I kind of want to... No, I need to kill this one. But that's all right, isn't it? Oh, okay. Let's put this down here. Because it's got perfect range. It's going to go... Wabam! Up to there. That's okay. I'm covering one empty blank space, which isn't ideal. But it's all right. I'm okay with it. 
then I think then how am I getting four more damage onto here? It's probably going to be Bruxa, right? Four more damage onto here. It's probably going to be done by Bruxa. Um, kind of feels like it will be, yeah. And I also could have her positioned here to be adjacent to two hordes that get destroyed, which feels like, I mean, to me, that sounds really good. So she can definitely do two of it. Oh, man, this is a little awkward. A little awkward indeed. I need... I might have to send Bruxa onto that horde, which is not the end of the world. Actually, I think it's fine that she does. Yeah, this is a little... I've definitely not amazingly done this. Although, actually, insane. Oh, okay. No, new plan. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's all in here. I'm trying very hard to put it to you folks. This is what's going to happen. We're going to activate Bruxa. When she activates... In front of her, we can place two skulls. So we can place two one by one polyomino damage tiles. I'm gonna chance it that I keep whittling this one down. I think. No, actually, let's go with the one that's certainly more of a more of a threat. Let's put them there. And then one. Yeah, she's gonna go. Move first. She's gonna go one. I'm gonna trigger this blossom which I love. We need to put two individuals. I hope I have. Oh, yeah, I do. Here we go. Oh, sugar. I've actually... Oh, I don't know if I've done this right at all. Yeah, so she's moving. One. Oh, yeah, this is this is not what I... know. Oh, goodness me. This is not what I needed to do. So one to there. Oh, man. Yeah, I've messed up the movement range. I thought she'd get back to here, but she can't make it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. So what she can do is go one, two, three. Yeah, this is... I'm going to take a damage that I don't need to take. Then she's going to do her basic attacks. We did her passive. Then we used her movement. And then we're doing an action. We're going to do a basic attack straight in front on the horde she's not engaged with. And then, this is really awkward. I've really not done this eloquently at all. I'm going to play the Warcher Arbor here. And I'm going to use its far shot ability to reduce it from a 3 by one to a 2 by one And I'm going to let it shoot over here to fill this gap. I really wanted to take this out because I didn't want to lose the soldiers. Because if I didn't destroy this horde, they would kill the soldiers. Uh, Hopefully everything is cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, then I've got one tower left, which is the Mystic Dias for Bruxa. And there's nowhere she can play this. I need to upgrade this. So I'm going to upgrade it and pass it. Oh, that was rough. I definitely did not do that perfectly well. So, yeah, tough one, tough one. Okay, let's destroy Horde Trace. This one's fine. This one's fine. This one's destroyed, and I'll get a skull for it being adjacent to Bruxa. Get out of there. Okay, give me back those tiles, and the damage, and the dagger, and the spell. And we can have either a gold or a crystal. I'm going to take a crystal. And then this one's getting destroyed. Auric will take a damage because he does not have his Sand Warriors with him now. So he is down to one health. Now, if your heroes get reduced to zero health, they don't die. They're not permanently out of the game. But in the following round, you have to basically just place your hero card onto your hero board to basically regenerate them. So they lose a round of play. And I got a second one, which I'll also take as a crystal. So he's on one health. Bruxa is about to take a damage because we're going to advance horde trays. This one's going to advance one, be right outside our kingdom. I could let four monsters through and still be fine because we have five hearts. So it's always something to consider. This one's going to try to move, but because Brux is on top of it, she will stop it moving and take a damage. So she goes to one health. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're all done with the movement. We're then going to pick up tower and horde cards. So Let's grab everything back. Purple is Bruxa. 
green is all right. Okay. So where do we stand? Let me show you Brux's hand right now. I've unfortunately unbalanced things a little bit. So that's Bruxa. She's got three towers. Does have three good towers. Well, two decent and one kind of middling um, for this stage of the game. Whereas Ulrich is kind of like rocking it. <laughs> He's He is on four level two and a level three. I think I definitely need to look at passing uh, one of those backwards to Bruxa um, uh, this round, maybe, uh, to try and make sure she's enough. But what we will do is we'll spend two crystals on a new tire and we will give it to Bruxa. And it's probably going to be a Mystic Dias, I think. No. No, let's go with the Hunter Arbor, actually. So she does, she's back to four tires. I'm going to keep Bruxes here so you guys can see it because it's a little easier for me to manage. There we go. All right. Decent, decent array. And yeah, this is, oof, it's going to depend what's about to spawn. Okay. So spending crystals done, start of the new round. We're spend, spawning new hordes. So first one, yep, yeah. More speed, more satires. Second one. Oh, here we go. Magma Elementals. So these big molten brutes are incredibly tough. Each time a tough enemy is covered by an attack, at most one square of the damage tile or miniature is allowed to cover it. And we do, because it's got the symbol, have to spawn a new horde, which, of course, is some of these lovely gentlemen. And we'll shimmy Auric to here. And so, yes. Basically, let's show you these guys. If I want to put a tile here, this is great to have the designers in chat. They'll keep me right. When I place a tile, I can only cover a maximum of one tough at a time. So this would be fine because they're two different tough enemies. This would also be fine. I cannot do this. I can't cover two squares of the same tough monster at a time. At most, I can cover one of each. If I have separate attacks... Um, I can place multiple tiles separately if they're separate tiles, but not if they are one. Thankfully, I've prepped for this a little bit. Did we? We only gained one Skull and Brook, so yes. So we're not going to get her big ultimate passive yet, but we will get it soon. Can you still buy level two towers for three crystals? Yes. Yes, you can indeed. Okay, over to me. Right, first things first, we have to deal with the threat over here. Well, I say have to, right? We could let some of it through, but I feel like we really should deal with it. Um, we should also start chipping away at these because let's not lie, they're problematic. We need to chip away at them over the course of some times. Correct as Drummond. <laughs> um, so let's get some soldiers i think how many soldier towers do we have right now we have one with bruxa we have one with Arik, but it spawns two okay so here's what's going to happen i'm going to get Arik's activation done first he's going to move one to here and then he's going to use his action to recover or rest that does a couple of things first of all it puts his health back to full it would replenish his special abilities, but we're not using them because it's the very first scenario. It also then brings his sand warriors back to his space and they are considered soldiers. So I'm going to place them directly onto the satyrs. And we're back to full health, but we're not going to lose any now, which is really great. I'm very happy about that. That's exactly where he's going to be. He's not going to get through his basic attack because he rested instead. Okay. Then we totally want to cover... I want to make sure I deal with this completely. So a nice, neat way to deal with it will be with Auric again. So Auric's going to go here with his ranger. He's going to place one soldier here and one soldier here. Each one of them then is going to get to throw a dagger. The first one's going to throw a dagger over to here. and We're going to chip a little bit off one of these magma elementals. And the second one... Mm, spicy, spicy, spicy. I need to just think for a quick second. Yeah, it's also going to chip one away. 
I'm going to work those guys down a little bit. Haven't forgotten about this. Need to, <laughs> and by haven't, I mean I 100% forgot about this. So I need to go down and deal with that. But it, it's probably going to be all right. Yeah, it's going to be fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're then going to do Hunter Arbor for a three by one and do this. Yeah. So when Bruxa activates, she's going to get to fire three. Okay. Um, I realized though that if Bruxa doesn't rest and she stays on this horde, she's currently covering three. If she stays in that horde and doesn't rest, she'll basically be taken out, which means I'll probably need to rest with her, which means I don't have her available to deal with this. Right. Okay. Let's deal with this. Let's put this tower here. Uh, we can put it there. Oh, oh, oh no. Now the cool thing is I can absolutely cover this and let those three monsters through. I will lose three of my five uh, hearts, um, but I'll still get the reward for the horde making it. I'll flip it over and I'll still get the their red, so I'll still get the crystal on the back. But I really don't want to. It's a matter of pride, you know? Like, I really don't want that to happen. So, I'm going to play... Oh, it's a spicy meat the baller. I'm going to play... Oryx or Canastias that has perfect range. He's going to do it over to here. Boom. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Then... I'm going to play his other Arcanist Dias on top of the Ranger Barracks that he owns. And that's going to set up this. So it's two left there that Bruxa can 100% deal with if I need her to, which I think I probably will. But I want to take care of the horde that she's standing on. Ideally, I mean, there's only one there. I could, I could remove her kind of, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another, really. So I'm going to activate Bruxa. I'm going to keep her where she is. She, when she activates, I can put out three skull damage tokens in front of her, because now I have uh, three available. And we're going to put one here. And then we're going to put two over here on these little nasty magma elementals. Two separate ones. Um, oh man okay then we've got true damage available though I don't really need it now then we're going to pass the boulder circle to Bruxa and give her this amazing men here circle for next round I'm sorry I rested with Bruxa sorry forgive me she didn't move and she simply rested she's staying exactly where she is then we're going to grab her. I just realized, did I leave myself shy on destroying this? No, I didn't, right? I think we're fine. I very nearly did though. So I'm gonna do a defender barracks here. We'll place out a single soldier and they will flying uh, throwing dagger over to there. Then Brooks is gonna go here and just place out a single. Not efficient play here, but it's all right. And then finally, super not efficient, but we're going to go here with the Hunter Arbor. We're going to reduce its damage from two by one to a one by one to enable it to shoot over there. Hoof. Okay. Okay. Big round. Here we go. Destroying horde time. So first horde's up. It's out of here. Didn't need to take it out, but I really wanted to. It was really a matter of like, I don't want to lose hearts. I know that's what they're there for, but come on. We're going to get a red, so we're going to get a crystal. Then that's a skull, and that's going to put Bruxa at her maximum of four skulls. This one's going to get destroyed. Bruxa rested, so she went back to full health, but now she's going down to one again because she destroyed a horde that she's engaged with. Cha, cha. Reading chat quickly just to make sure no designers are saying, ah, you got it wrong. Uh, let's grab another. Let's just grab a gold. What is this? This one is yellow as well. 
So it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, so I'll grab a gold and then I'll grab a crystal for the next one. Uh, we're going to take out this one. Both sand warriors are going to go, unfortunately, but they will sacrifice themselves to protect Ulrich. So he will take no damage, which is great. And yeah, we'll take a crystal for this one. All right. Then we're advancing. So this one's going to advance one. We're going to end up with a little bit of jumping here, but it's okay. We'll put all right there. Now we're going to pick up tar and hero cards. So we've now got this on Bruxa, which I'm super happy about. And I'm almost certainly going to upgrade it, uh, modify it even further. Uh, so this is Bruxa. This is Bruxa. Oh, yeah, Brooks is going to have, like, AoE damage four days with the blasts. Boom. Oh, amazing. Okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling all right. I think we're heading into the last round. we got to spend. So I'm going to buy one more tire and one more mod. A little, sh oh, I could have potentially got three crystals and bought a level two tire. Ugh, ugh. Uh, it's a lot of those hard two heroes. <laughs> um, so, one tire, one mod. Let's give a Defender Barracks to Alric, and let's grab a mod. I'm going to grab... Maybe I need more soldiers. Oh, there's a question. Hey, designers, are you listening? I'm buying this modification. If I put it on this one, I can freely choose the direction for this bonus attack. If I put it on this one, does it get true damage? Good question. I actually don't know the answer to this. I want to say no, because it's an additional attack, but I'm going to wait. Because um, I think if there's more satyrs coming, having more true damage could be great. Oh, I'm going to wait. This is a big moment. This is like... Uh, oh, missed, I hope missed opportunities in my play or missed opportunities in the campaign. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, so many chats, so hard. You misplayed as you could put one sand warrior in the horde of Bruxa. Yeah, I know, right? I, I definitely think that uh, I could have played better. It's always tough when trying to talk through everything and always tough when trying to uh, articulate everything that's going on because there's so many lovely combinations you can do. Um, I... Probably going to put it on this one unless I get told differently. Let me confirm with Jesse. I'm going to I'm going to house rule it right now that uh, that it doesn't get the benefit from it. But we'll see. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, no, no, no. What? <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> you can't double up. I can't. Oh well, that's true. That is true. Though she's caught me so this wasn't even an option because that would have been two mods aha see tried to trick you <laughs> good answer good answer <laughs> okay so we're done spending crystals we're done spending gold we're going into the last round because there is just one card left in each horde stack this one is going to get to jump because it should spawn here but there's not a space so it's going to push bruxa I'm going to turn Bruxa so she's there. I don't even... Am I allowed to... I, I believe I'm allowed to turn her whenever she gets pushed. I believe. It doesn't matter too much because I can still face her that way and I think it's absolutely fine. It's not going to make a, a huge deal of difference for her. Um, then this one... Oh, sugar, it's not more satires at all. It's just more magmas. Oh, uh, no. No. Uh, crush dreams. Still, do they stack? I mean, yeah, I guess it's a question that could come up for the mage towers. So, like, it's, it's one we'll have to get clarification on. That's the fun of being in the early stages of development. Please hold. <laughs> we've got we've got six months more, nine months more to, to work on it. So we'll definitely make sure this kind of thing is answered. Okay, here we go. Last round... And I've got a ton of magma elementals to deal with, which is really horrible 
because they all need like lots of individual hits. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a moment here to really consider where I need to go. I feel like Brux's boulder circle here would be great. Um, when I activate Brux, she's going to get to put four down. And then I'll probably move her. Oh, this is really, this is really tough. So I'm just, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to assess how much I need. So when Brux activates, she'll get to put out four individual skulls onto this horde here. So I essentially can cover the four tough remaining, and that would end up awkwardly with three individual ones, so I probably wouldn't do it like that. I'd probably do these guys and maybe that one, and then I'd have a two and a one. Her basic attack could do one, and I'd just be left with one, and that could be easily covered somewhere by soldiers. So I'm going to leave Bruxa for a moment. I'm just take it as a given that she's going to handle the majority of that horde. And if that's the case, then we're going to put a defender barracks here because that's where we can easily put that. We'll do a soldier and we're going to throw a dagger over to there. Seems good. If, the, if, a mage, if a mage tower has true damage and you add another damage mod, the whole card... Oh, lost it. Where'd it go? Uh, the whole card is considered true damage. Ooh, spicy. Love it. Love everything about it. That's wicked. Um, this has to go here. Like, it has to go there because it's going to let me put a 2 by one on all three hordes plus an additional 2 by one because we modified it in front. Like, this is just... It has to be there. It's the dream positioning. It's the artillery fanboy's dream moment and I'm here to enjoy it. So let's do one there. Let's do... Oh. Helena, can you find out for me? Whenever a hero gets bumped, can they rotate their direction? Because it's going to have an impact. <laughs> it's going to have a big impact on the game. So one, two, three, and another one in front. Uh, I guess that's fine. I guess. No, let's do it there. And there's a reason why because my Watcher Arbor is going to go here from Ulrich, and it's going to do a three by one, boom, straight down the middle, covering one square of each tough enemy. Uh, correct, those mods can stack with other mods as long as it's legal for the tower card to be modded twice. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay. This is getting good. Yes, they can. Okay, so I'm going to do a small, because now I know that rule. Whenever... Brooks, I got bumped. I'm going to have her face this way because it just gives me far more flexibility for her attack, which is hugely important for what's about to go down. I think I'm way overthinking this, to be honest. I think I really do have this on lock right now. Like, I really, I, I, I genuinely think that I am way overthinking this because I'm on stream with you all and I don't want to feel you, you know? Please hold. <laughs> uh, put one there. Put one there. Seems good. Then we need to throw two daggers. And we're definitely throwing them across to the problematic ones. So here and here. Where's Ulrich going? Where's, guys, where's Ulrich going? Like, I, I, I've got a lot of towers still to place here. And I need to fit Ulrich in somewhere. So is he going here? Because right now, I'm kind of like, maybe I should put... Oh, goodness. Oh, man. Yeah, like, I'm kind of closing off the places that Ulrich can stand, which is awesome and also uh, risky. Because I've got a lot of these two by two squares now, and they're not amazing for covering these big tough guys who can shrug off the big blasts. So one of them can go there like so. Ah, 
So, mm, if I do that, where, literally, where is Ulrich standing? Like, Ulrich would basically be doing nothing right now, which is really bad. But I kind of have to do that. No, I need, no, can't do that. Oh, oh flipping heck. Right, so let's get Ulrich in. I think I know where Ulrich needs to go, so let's just lock him in. So Ulrich's going to go boom, boom to here. Then he's going to auto-attack to basically cover a two-by-one there and a one there. Yeah, Ulrich has to do that. Like, that's not, like, that's not an option. But the problem is by doing that, I've essentially, because I've been a little bit, bold with what I've done is I've left myself with these two two by two tires and there's nowhere great for me to put them. I've kind of docked myself eight damage right now. And how tough is that, right? Cool. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So I still think we're fine though. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the Watcher Arbor here for Bruxa. And we're going to reduce its damage. Oh, I could have gone to this. Oh, this is brilliant. And we're going to reduce its damage to a two by one. A two by one. And that's going to go because of far shot in there, like so. So that one is taken care of. Although that's actually, hold on a second. No, 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 no. Think again. This one, that one's taken care of. Better, 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 better play. Right. Now we activate Bruxa. Yes, I knew I was overthinking this. We've got four skulls on Brux's board, which means I get to put down four singles in the spaces in front of her and then a two by one. Oh yeah, I was I think I was worrying way too much. We've got one, two, three, four. Then I remove all of her skulls, bar one, so I remove three of the four. And I get to put down a two by one because we've charged up all of her death from all them hordes dying and she can then move and activate and i'm going to have a go one two to here face back this way and do her basic attack oh i was so worried at the end there that i was going to fluff it and in the end we ended up with a hundred arbor and a border circle still to use on bruxa plus an arcanist dais and another one with with uh, perfect range and Defender Barracks still on Ulrich. Oh, I think I was I think I was worrying way too much that I was going to mess up at the end there. But getting all of that split little individual damage was awesome. And I think if I could have gotten one of the Arcanus Dias leveled up into the Eldritch, so I could have had a two by one and two individual ones that could have been spread out more, that would have been so much more flexible and would have left, left me in a position where I was far less worried about messing up. But doing it in the way I did, I nearly, nearly ended up blocking myself um, into, a, into a tough position. But thankfully, Brux's passive, Ulrich being able to move in and put down his auto attack and also cover himself, and this amazing modified, uh, yeah, the modified tires and the abilities of the hunters all came together there. Whew. There we go. So what would happen now is we would destroy Horde, destroy Horde, destroy Horde. And it doesn't really matter because this is the final round because in this scenario, the round, the game ends whenever the round is over where the last Hordes have spawned. But we take them all out. Ulrich recovered earlier, so he is actually going to stay perfectly alive as well. Oh, yes. Amazing. Oh, Yes, I'm so sorry that I've not looked at chat at all during this. I realized, especially once I got to like round three onwards, that I was like starting to really get into it. I was starting to really get the strategy together um, and trying to make sure that I didn't fail you all. That would have been decimating. Ha! Huh. Ah, oh, yes, success. Success. I feel like, oh, anyway, drink a water movie. That was awesome. That went, it went really well. I love how Bruxa and Auric feel completely different to each other, but they both bring such awesome decisions. Bruxa's positioning, when to engage her and when just to use her basic attack. Auric, 
like whenever you're going to have a special abilities so you can also rest to get your sand warriors back and your abilities back and working out when to let him take damage when to use the sand warriors to protect himself and when to use it to protect other heroes like that's going to be really cool i think especially at like three or four players is going to be really cool for that uh, I saw Scenario 2 prototype. I think it'll be give us a very hard time. Yeah, I'm not the brightest bulb in the room, so there's a there's a real chance it'll give me a very hard time. I think we might play it, though. I think we might do it. You did it. Congrats. Uh, I'm scrolling back, scrolling back. I'm proud of you, Az. It's only level one. We need to give you hope that you can win. <laughs> oh, my hope. My hope. Um, okay. We're going to look to wrap this up. Um Oh, Camilla, that's awesome. Thank you. This is, yeah, this is literally scenario one. There will be a prologue. There will be a, a, like a learning scenario that will help to teach you the game and give you an idea of the flow and the rounds and how it breaks down. So there will be a prologue. Then you'll have a scenario plus a whole campaign of a dozen scenarios plus all the extra ones. There's another seven in more than shadows that have been unlocked. So at a base level, you're going to have 19 unique scenarios with lots of different mini bosses, lots of different added content. And that's if you just go for the, the deluxe or the retail. If you just take the base game with the More Than Shadows expansion included for free, I think it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, I know that's, I'm, I am I mean, I'm biased, obviously, but it's it's great. So oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I have no doubt that he can crush it. Oh, goodness, Bree, you're very, you're, you're being far too nice. <laughs> right. So any questions before we wrap up? How are we doing on the campaign, actually? And in fact, while you're writing your questions, if you have any, I have something to share. And if you're watching at night or if you're watching um, in the dark, prepare to cover your eyes because I received something today to share with you all. Here it comes. It's going to be white. You ready? Oh, look at him. Look at Gulthak. What do you think? Is the community vote... Definitely split some people. It's clear that some people wanted him, some people didn't, but Gulthak was the worthy winner. And we think he is starting to look absolutely awesome. What do you guys think of him? Let's see your comments. Cool. <laughs> cool. So Gulthak was our community voted boss. I'm sure Halana and Jesse are going to have a blast bringing him into the game. It's funny because Gulthak in the lore is kind of like an old chilled kind of uh storytelling or kind of boring campfire or but like he's gonna be he's just gonna be trotting along i imagine he's gonna be causing real ruckus through the path i cannot wait to see uh <laughs> wait to see what we come up with for him um and yes the design hasn't even really properly begun yet because he was literally just picked last weekend uh, by all the people in the community and all the backers that voted. So we're really looking forward to seeing what we, we get together for him. Um, okay, well, look, if there's no questions, I'm going to look to wrap this up. I wanted to see how the campaign was doing. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I left it, we were very we were getting close towards the next goal. Oh, wow, yeah, we're only 1,800 away from the next stretch goal. That's awesome, and that's going to complete quest six. That's great. <laughs> Am I the crazy old man? No, Gulthak's the crazy old man. I'm going to hope that's what you're saying. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, look, thank you so much for hanging out, for playing this with me. If you would like another stream, if you'd like to see the second scenario, please let me know. Um, good question, actually, then, from Eduardo. Hey, again, uh, will you or can we paint the figures? If so, what kind of paint to use? And will you release a color scheme for each character, both for Rift in Time and Elementals, uh, Element Uprising? Great question. Yes, you can paint the minis. There's many people actually in this chat who I know have painted the minis. On Board Game Geek, if you search for Kingdom Rush uh, Rift in Time, you'll see tons of painted minis. Loads and loads of people are painting them. Um, generally speaking, like there's loads of companies you can go with. You know, Citadel, Vallejo. Uh, you can go with the, oh, uh, I forget the Privateer Press one. It's not VAT33. I can't remember what it's called now. But basically, if you have any, have a Google at all for any miniature paints, you're, you really can't go wrong. It's getting easier and easier these days. Um, and like we're using uh, 3D printed minis right now for the prototype. Uh, oh, I realize you can't see that. There we go. Um, which are rough. 
and not quite as nice as the ones that you will get whenever they arrive with you, but you will absolutely be able to uh, to paint them. I do recommend priming as well, um, so that you do use like a spray can prime, or if you're into it, obviously you'd know about the likes of airbrushing, but having them primed and cleaned beforehand is good because with plastic miniatures, when they come out of the molds, they can sometimes be a little bit of like residue that you would never notice unless you were going to paint them. So giving them a little a little wash and a little clean, letting them dry off, giving them a prime, they're perfect for painting, really, really perfect. And to be honest with you, we're going to have a few painting guides done by community members, but there's a bunch of people who are making uh, community videos. If you go to YouTube right now, oh, his name escapes me. There is a wonderful person who's doing full-on like introductory painting guides for the Kingdom Rush Rift and Time miniatures right now on YouTube. And... Um, they're they're perfect for it, and they're really great for people who like to do kind of cartoon, vibrant, bold colors, or people who are just getting into painting because they've got quite good surface areas and quite large. They're quite forgiving because they're kind of chibi esque in a way, right? So they're not hyper detailed. So you can dive in and, and do a pretty decent job, even if it's your first time, relatively easily. Um, so let me scroll down. Alex says, um. Hey, good question, Alex Shang. How do I feel? Uh, how do you feel about GameFound versus Kickstarter for your comparison? And you're very welcome. I'm very, very, very happy to be to be sharing this video. It's really a blast. I'm sorry I didn't read more of the comments because I love reading them and engaging with you folks. Um, yeah, so GameFound has been awesome. It's obviously early days for the platform. You know, they've got a long way to go. They've just announced their next five games that will be launching, which is super exciting. We had some issues, you know, unfortunately, like we've had some of our updates weren't being emailed correctly, but they also did things like implementing the poll system and the poll system's wonderful. The hashtag system's wonderful. The whole liking a thumbs up thing's good. And it's clear that not everybody um, who's maybe familiar with Kickstarter or even the likes of Indiegogo and such um, is completely familiar or aware of GameFound yet, but that's going to grow over time. You know, I think they were on like 400,000 um, members um, only like a month or so ago or less. And um, yeah, it's been good. It's been really, really enjoyable and a lot of learning. Um, and hopefully from your perspective, you know, from looking at the campaign, um, it's not been too difficult. And we really like the kind of, uh, I mean, let's call it a cart system where you can kind of add individual things. And that's worked quite well for us where we've had Elemental Uprising, but we also wanted to make sure that Rifts in Time was available there for people that wanted it. So that worked quite nicely and meant that you weren't just uh, managing a number in your play. So yeah, pros and cons. It's, it, you know, there's, there's different things. Um, and I think GameFound has a really strong future ahead of it. Whether Lucky Duck Games will continue to, uh, to be on there for all of our crowdfunding campaigns in the future, or just um, again, coming back when we have certain titles. I don't really know yet, actually, um, what it's gonna be, but we're pretty happy. And it's really good to see more diversity coming into the tabletop industry. And uh, I think, I mean, to oversimplify it, it's in competition is good. Um, but I do generally believe that having uh, a second platform alongside Kickstarter so they can both kind of um, vibe off each other and, and improve and, and kind of, you know, com compete in that way that it breeds um, ingenuity and breeds new ideas. I think it's generally quite positive uh, and I hope that both flourish. Uh, let's put that question away. Uh, I'm actually painting one of the Riffin Time minis right now. I love it, Blackwing Berg. I'd love to see a second scenario, says Paul. Yes, I think... Second scenario is likely if my throat holds up. Maybe maybe Tuesday or Wednesday night, because we finish on Thursday. Maybe Tuesday or Wednesday evening for a second scenario. Maybe. What is what is this fringe doing? Um, yes, keep scrolling. Uh, who are you painting? The minis look good. Lynn, scrolling, scrolling. Love game found, especially for the cart. Yeah, Alex, I, I feel you. Um, how do you beat a boss? So unfortunately, I don't have. I don't have a boss card here. One second. Uh, because here is uh, Lord Blackburn from the first game. He is massively here <laughs> to give you a sense of scale. Like he is just huge. So my focus might not be uh, getting. And he is, and she covers entire areas. And they have, I'm going to see if I can. Oh, this is from Rift in Time, but I'm seeing if I can quickly grab. Here we go. 
here is a, an example of like a, a life card essentially. So you're going to be, he's going to be moving through the path as you're attacking basically bits of him and whittling him down and working through him and taking him out. So you basically fight a boss the same way you do fight as anything, anything else, but they'll have their own custom mechanics, their own custom reference card, their own custom rules, um, and every boss is, is super unique. So hopefully that, uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you a, an idea. As did you mean, uh, did you mean me, myself, and Dice? That rings a bell. I'm gonna do a quick, quick Google, hold on. Yes, me, myself, and Dice is 100% right, if you want, a good idea for how to get painting, Rift in Time, or, or, or indeed Elemental Uprising when it comes. Me, myself, and Dice on YouTube is a great place to start. Uh, good. Thank you so much, the Banzai Tree. Uh, da -da -da, works for me. I did the four big bosses from the expansions. Oh, wicked. Uh, <laughs> yes. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Well, look, I'm going to wrap this up. I am going to go and play some King Rush. Maybe <laughs> go tidy up and then maybe play some more Kingdom Rush. All right. Have a great evening or night or day, whatever it is for you in the world. Thank you so much for your support and for being here for the whole video for this whole hour and 45 minutes. It really means the world to me and to us, Lucky Duck and the entire team. So thank you. And thank you, Helena, for being in the chat this whole time. That was epic. And for Jesse for stopping by. It's wonderful whenever you've got the designers to chip in and tell you when you're doing stuff wrong or indeed doing stuff right in this case, in, in some ways. So yeah, until next time, I'm going to end the stream and I will see you all very soon.